While the Sony PlayStation has changed so much over the last three decades, one thing that hasn't changed is the company's history of winning. Nearly every PlayStation console that's been released has won that generation's console war, and this isn't just a coincidence either. Sony has mastered the art of war, and it started all the way back in 1994 when they released the original PlayStation, the console that was only created out of a dispute with a competitor that didn't go Sony's way. Sony certainly has come a long way since then, and we'll let you know how they've consistently found a way to come out on top. But before we get into Sony's history of winning the console wars, we'd like to thank Thank World of Warships for sponsoring this video. World of Warships is the free-to-play naval action game where you command some of history's most iconic war vessels. Sign up today and use the code READY4BATTLE2020 to earn a whole bunch of in-game goodies like doubloons, credits, and two free ships. Believe it or not, before the PlayStation was even a thing, Nintendo and Sony were working on an add-on for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in 1988 that would allow the system to play games on CDs as well as cartridges. Of course, this add-on never came to be. There was a whole dispute about licensing, and Nintendo wasn't happy with what Sony was asking for, so they ceased the partnership and made a deal with Philips. Releasing the Philips CDI that was far from a successful console, oh boy. After that debacle, Sony decided to take matters into their own hands, so they made their own video game console in 1994 when they released the original PlayStation that would become available a year later in North America. Its main competitor was the Nintendo 64, which was released a year later in 1996. Despite being a new console at the time, the PS1 had a huge library full of quality games. It turns out that making it easy for developers to master the system's capabilities helps. The PS1 wasn't a complicated console to develop games for, and plenty of developers took notice. Third-party developers flocked to the console, mainly due to the PS1's use of CD technology, which caused Nintendo to lose a lot of their franchises to Sony most notably Final Fantasy. On top of all this, PS1 games were far less expensive than Nintendo 64 games. As for the PS1 controller, it really pushed innovation at the time, as it had four shoulder buttons instead of the typical two. The controller didn't have any analog sticks initially, but to respond to N64's single analog stick, Sony released a PS1 controller with two analog sticks in 1997. Overall, the PS1 sold over 102 million units worldwide, which was significantly more than the N64 and Sega Saturn combined. Saying it was a smashing success was an understatement. Following the unprecedented success of the PlayStation, the PS2 was released worldwide in 2000, a year before both the Nintendo GameCube and the Xbox, giving it an immediate advantage. To capitalize on the DVD craze at the time, Sony decided to not only make the PS2 a video game console, but a DVD player as well. Oh yeah, and the console only sold for 300 bucks at the time, which was amazing because DVD players were typically selling for upwards of $300 themselves. By buying a PS2, you essentially got both a video game console and a DVD player for the price of a single DVD player. That's a heck of a bargain, and people flocked to the PS2 because of it. PlayStation 2. PlayStation. PlayStation 2. The newest, fastest video game system ever. As well as being a media hub, the PS2 was also backwards compatible with the PS1, so there were many other reasons to upgrade to the console as well. The PS2 continued to be an easy console for developers to make games for, but they started to also get a bit more interested in the Xbox due to its similar capabilities. The PS2 controller continued the trend of dual analog sticks, allowing for better movement, and it also had pressure-sensitive face buttons. The only major knocks on the console were that it had two controller ports, which could be expanded through the multi-tap accessory, expensive games, and a lack of online support that the Xbox had. Sure, Sony would later come out with a slim version of the PS2 that was incredibly small and had built-in networking for online play, but the console didn't initially release with these features. Adding online functionality was more of a response to Microsoft's Xbox than anything else. All of this led to the console selling over 155 million units, a number that completely dwarfs the Xbox's 24 million and the GameCube's 22 million. In fact, the PS2 is still the best-selling console of all time. Let's take a quick break from the console wars of the past to talk about the naval wars you could get into in World of Warships, a massive online battle simulator where you square off against people across the globe for naval supremacy. With each ship being accurate to their real-life counterpart and over 300 ships in total, every battle is just so immersive. 
Dynamic and unpredictable weather effects will keep you on your toes as you try to take out your opponents. Sign up today and use the code READY4BATTLE2020 to pick up some awesome in-game goodies. But this is only for first-timers. Jump into World of Warships with your friends and experience some of the new content updated each and every week. And now, let's get back to the console wars. Riding the coattails of their success with the PS2, Sony might have been feeling themselves a little too much because the launch of the PS3 was somewhat of a disaster. For starters, the Xbox 360 released a whole year earlier than the PS3, and we saw how much of an advantage that gave Sony with the PS2. The PS3 launched two days earlier than the Nintendo Wii. Many gamers weren't a fan of the hardware design of the PS3 that made it very difficult for developers to make games for the system. Games that were ported from PC used the same DirectX architecture in the Xbox 360, since, well, Microsoft Windows is the OS of pretty much every single PC, so they could seamlessly port games onto the console. The PS3 didn't use DirectX at all, which made things difficult for developers trying to create games for all three platforms. For this reason, developers preferred making games on PC and Xbox 360. The backwards compatibility with PS2 games was also full of bugs and glitches, making some games completely unplayable. In terms of games, there weren't that many quality games available at launch compared to the Xbox 360 that had already been around for a whole year. The console also sold for a ridiculous $600 US, which was absolutely crazy at the time, considering the Xbox 360 was a whole $200 cheaper. That's enough to make anybody consider switching, even if its predecessor, the PS2, was one of the best consoles of all time. Sony didn't even have intentions of giving their DualShock 3 controller a rumble feature, but after receiving some backlash, they later decided to add it back in. It was also wireless and came with motion controls through six axis. Sony would later release PlayStation Move as their answer to the Wii's motion controls, but that wasn't a huge success for the company. Now, the console did eventually get its bearing with the PS3 Slim model, and ended up outselling the Xbox 360 by about 3 million units due to its better build quality and impressive exclusives. But it was arguably Sony's least successful home console, and didn't come close to the Wii's 101 million units sold. Sony's PS4 and Microsoft's Xbox One both launched at around the same time in 2013, with the PS4 coming out a week ahead of the Xbox One. Nintendo only released the Switch in 2017, so although it's been crushing it so far, they started the eighth generation of consoles with the Wii U in 2012, which was a major flop for the company. So essentially, the battle was between Sony and Microsoft from the get-go, and Sony won before the consoles were even released. Much like Sony's PS3 launch, Microsoft's Xbox One launch was a complete disaster, to put it lightly. For starters, it was going to initially have DRM to prevent players from sharing games and buying them secondhand. Then there was the fact that the Kinect came bundled with the console, increasing its price by $100 and bringing up questions of privacy. On top of all this, gamers were led to believe that you always had to be online to use the console. Yeah, while it was a mess at Microsoft, Sony just went about their merry way and took shots at Microsoft in their press conferences, learned from the mistakes of the PS3, and delivered a solid console at launch. Like we mentioned earlier, the PS3 was known for being an absolute pain to develop games for, but the PS4 experienced no such issues. Tech insiders mentioned that the PS4 actually had a significant and obvious edge on the Xbox One in terms of performance. That being said, the PS4 Pro that was capable of playing games in 4K resolution had less impressive specs than the Xbox One X, so Microsoft definitely did have a response. The DualShock 4 controller is one of the best Sony has ever created, although gamers have a lot of mixed feelings about the seldom-used touchpad and the unnecessary battery-draining light bar. The PS4 had an incredible library of games, and their exclusives had some of the best gameplay and graphics we've seen this generation. To this day, the PS4 has sold over 110 million units, which is much more than the Xbox One's 47 million. This all leads to the upcoming PS5. On paper, the PS5 and its main competitor, the Xbox Series X, are quite similar, but there are some major differences worth noting. The Xbox Series X is capable of producing 12 teraflops to the PS5's 10.28, so Microsoft's machine definitely has more raw power, but it seems like Sony is going in a completely different direction. Sure, the specs of the PS5 aren't as impressive as the Xbox Series X, but Sony is going for a more efficient machine than Microsoft. The PS5 has higher max clock speeds on the CPU and GPU than the Xbox Series X, so it could work harder than its competitor, which means it also needs a very advanced cooling system since higher speeds means faster moving parts and more heat. 
All of this may increase the price of the PS5 significantly and allow the Xbox Series X to undercut the price of the PS5, but most of this is just a rumor at the moment. Sony, continuing to learn from their mistakes with the PS3, made sure to ask developers what they wanted to see, and they said they wanted an SSD optimized for gaming, so Sony made the best SSD they could. Its read and write speeds put the Xbox Series X's SSD to shame meaning that the game should definitely load faster on the PS5 than the Xbox Series X. In fact, loading screens might not even be a thing anymore on the console. That being said, the Xbox Series X does have more storage than the PS5, since it has a 1TB solid-state drive as opposed to the PS5's 825GB. But since they both come with an expansion bay, it's far from a deal-breaker. At the moment, we have no idea who's going to come out on top in the next generation of console wars, but it's going to be one heck of a battle because both of these machines are the most sophisticated and advanced consoles we've ever seen. But before we go, make sure to check out World of Warships. We've added a whole bunch of info in the description for this video so you can see what kind of goodies you're in for when you sign up for free today using the code READYFORBATTLE2020. So what are you waiting for? Join the over 30 million players already in action. And that's everything you need to know about Sony PlayStation and their history of winning. Do you think the PS5 is going to come out on top in the upcoming console wars? Let us know in the comment section down below, and don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer for more gaming videos. Thanks for watching.